In accelerated math analysis, we're looking at section 12.2, arithmetic sequences. Take a look at the top of the screen here. We could have a sequence, a numerical pattern of 4, 7, 10, 13. If I were to ask kids to guess what comes next, probably most kids would correctly say that they would think 16 would be occurring as a follow-up, and it would. Uh, students quickly would notice that in this pattern, we appear to constantly be adding a 3 from one term to the next. Uh, such a, a pattern is known as an arithmetic sequence. Now, ironically, what we're going to talk about is the difference, the subtraction between successive terms. As you look at 4 and 7, if I were to subtract uh, 7 minus 4, I would get a 3. As I'd subtract uh, these two successive terms, 10 minus 7, we would get a 3. Uh, the same would be true for any two successive terms. You'd always get the same subtraction as you take the higher order term minus the smaller order term. Uh, so when the difference of successive terms is always the same number, uh, the sequence is called arithmetic. That difference that you'd find would be called the common difference. Uh, so an arithmetic sequence, as we read in this yellow box, could be defined recursively. Now, to have a recursive definition, we must have a beginning. We must have a start. We'd say our first term is some value. And the problem that we had up here, we could say a sub 1 would equal 4, for example. Uh, but of course, a sub n minus a sub n minus 1 would equal d. That's that successive difference there uh, always being the same number. Now, as you can see right here, we could add the a sub n minus 1 to both sides. Uh, another way we can look at this is to say that to get your nth term, go to your previous term and add that common difference. Uh, so this is a recursive uh, way that we could represent this pattern. Again, uh, a sub 1 is our first term. d is going to be known as the common difference. Well. What you're going to notice is if you're continually adding D, if you're always adding that same constant, uh, what you're really going to see is you could see that for your first term, you have A sub 1. For your second term, you'd have A sub 1 plus D. Uh, your third term, well, you'd add another D. You just continue to add that, so now you'd have 2D. To get to your fourth term, you'd add a D yet again, and 2D plus 1D is 3D. Uh, so you can begin to pick up a pattern. Uh, you might guess what that fifth term would be. The fifth term is you add a D, you'd have A sub 1 plus. Well, add a D, you'd now have 4D. Hopefully you can see the pattern that we're talking about as we're in the fifth term we are adding four common differences. Uh, obviously, we didn't add a common difference the first time for our first term, uh, but uh, we add one for each successive. So what we're seeing is plain and simply this. Uh, and here's your explicit formula. This is uh, super, super, super uh, important. A sub n to get your nth term in the, the pattern. You'll always take your first term, a sub 1, plus n minus 1 times your common difference. Look, if n was your fifth term, notice that you had n minus 1 times d. That pattern holds all the way through. Uh, so how is that helpful? Well, take a look very quickly at, at this arithmetic sequence. We have 2, 6, 10, 14, and then 18. It doesn't take much to see that we are successfully adding 4 each time. Uh, that means that our D would be 4. It also is a reminder that our first term, of course, is a 2. Uh, but here's our first term, our second term, our third term, and so forth. Uh, we're asked, however, to jump way, way ahead to the 41st term. So using this explicit formula, 
we're going to be able to do that pretty quickly. We're going to say, look, n would have to be 41. So I'll have a sub 41. My first term we already saw was a 2. Uh, and then we'd have 41 minus 1. Well, that's going to be a 40. Times our common difference. Our common difference is a 4. So that's 2 plus a 40 multiplied to 4. Well, we know that 4 times 40 is 160. And then we add a 2. And without having to add the 4 repeatedly, we can say, hey, we know at our 41st term, the value will be 162. Well, not all of the problems in this section are going to be simply find a specified term. Sometimes you might be given some terms in an arithmetic sequence and you'll be asked to actually unlock what that sequence truly is looking like. Take a look at, at number two for an example. You might be told that an eighth term of an arithmetic sequence is 75 and the 20th term is 39. You'll be asked then to find the first term, the common difference, and a, a general nth term. Well, here's what's going on. We will, no doubt, go back to this very, very important formula, this explicit formula. And we can say we know what our eighth term is. So n is equal to 8. Now, if n is equal to 8, we'll know that a sub 8 is 75. So my eighth term is 75. I don't know my first term. But if n is 8, n minus 1 is going to be a 7. So I'll have 75 is equal to a sub 1 plus 7d. At first glance, this doesn't seem to be helpful, but there's more to the story. I also know what the 20th term is. So I'm going to come over here and rewrite that explicit formula. And I'm going to realize that my 20th term, when n is equal to 20, that 20th term, I'm told, is 39. So I've got 39 over here. I still don't know my first term. But if n is equal to 20, 20 minus 1 is going to be 19. So now I have 39 is equal to a sub 1 plus 19d. Here's the neat part. At this point, we now have really a system of equations. We have this equation right here, the 75 equals a1 plus 7d. We also have this 39 equals a sub 1 plus 19d. Now, what we can do is either use elimination or substitution. I'm going to opt for elimination because I think we can do this very, very fast. I'm going to recopy that second equation, but the first equation that I'm working with, I'm going to multiply that by negative 1. And we'd get negative 75, negative a sub 1, and then plus a negative 7d or a minus 7d. The a sub 1s are going to cancel. A 19d minus 7d would be 12d. And then negative 75 uh, minus 39 should get you negative 36. Negative 36 there. So at this point, what we can do is just divide by a 12 and very quickly see that d is equal to negative 3. Now, we're almost home. If we were to recopy, say, uh, our first equation, 75 equals a sub 1 plus 7d, we're going to now be able to say that that d value is negative 3 going to plug that in. 7 times negative 3 is actually negative 21. And then we can just add 21 to both sides to get 96. So I know my first term now, and I know my common difference. More to the point, if someone wanted me to find just an arbitrary term now, I could.
I could say, look, I know my a sub 1 is 96. And I know that my d, my common difference, is actually a negative. Uh, but this is now my explicit formula. And I could very, very, very easily go ahead and find any term. I could find uh, the 17th term, the 39th term, whatever somebody would ask for. Just plug that n value in and work that out. Now there is a follow-up where it says give a recursive formula for what you just found. Well, the recursive formula, I hope you remember, you are, of course, going to have to always have a beginning. And you want to specify what your first term is. But then to get to your nth term, you want to go to the previous term. And you're going to add to that your common difference. Uh, and uh, that right there would be the recursive formula for the sequence. Okay, as we go to the back, we'll at least get started with the idea that if we had such an arithmetic sequence, we might have n terms written out, but perhaps we'd like to add them. This is known as a series, as I mentioned the other day. And a series is just adding up uh, a specified number of terms in the sequence. So uh, you've got what we had before, and there are actually two different basic formulas. This sigma, of course, means add up, but this s sub n is the sum up to that number. So s sub n, uh, really one very, very useful formula is right here, and that's the uh, n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. Uh, because of the briefness of the video, I'm not going to prove this right here, uh, but Carl Friedrich Gauss, even as a young boy, was able to come up with this formula. It's absolutely a, a real clever way to, to derive this sum. Uh, but it's n over 2, multiply that to a sub 1 plus a sub n. Now, by the way, if you knew that, if you know that to be true, you could also say, now wait a minute, a sub n we saw earlier a sub n as we had done time and time and time again on the front page a sub n was this formula right here so very quickly if we just add a sub 1 plus a sub 1 we'd get 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d uh, what we're saying is here is a second formula that can be helpful. Uh, why do we have two different formulas here? They're, they're really the same, I hope you can see. Uh, but uh, for the first form that we came up with, you can use that if you have an arithmetic sequence where you know the first term, you know the last term, and uh, you actually also know how many terms you're dealing with. That's your n. Uh, you could quickly find what that sum of the terms is uh, very quickly and easily. This second form that we have right over here is uh, more useful if you don't know what that last term is, not that it's difficult to find out, uh, but if you were just asked, for example, to add up the first uh, 28 terms of uh, a given arithmetic a sequence where you know the first term and you know the common difference, you can use this formula and work it out nicely and quickly. So that's what we're, we're going to pick up with our second video. Uh, we're going to be using these two formulas, and uh, there are several more problems that we're going to be investigating. And uh, obviously, uh, one formula might be more useful than another.